Welcome to episode 280 of the Emergent Gamer Podcast. This is Felix Hergood, and I'm here with... Trip Zero. What's up, dude? It's Trip Zero, man. Yeah, two, 280. That's 280 weeks, in case anyone's counting. Not consecutive. Not consecutive at all. We do no, have a tendency to skip periodically, but like, this week was almost another. another that's what skip. I'm saying. Like, yeah, sometimes you gotta do it. I, we, I, I gotta be proud of us for 280 weeks. I gotta mm-hmm. say something. Like, we're one of the more consistent podcasts that I listen to. Now, it is true that I haven't got up on the website episodes 93 to one going back. Mm-hmm. Sure. So like the, we're missing 93 of our episodes. You can't get those. But I know I look at release schedules of lots of podcasts. Now, some podcasts do incredibly interesting seasonal work, mm-hmm. which I, I find interesting. In fact, I, I, I don't know if you would call them podcasts, but the radio stations that are being done on Apple Music are super fascinating to me because all the artists are out of work. And they're doing radio shows. They guess to make some money. They're getting. Oh, paid. I think you mentioned it before. They're getting yeah. paid by Apple. So if you're an Apple Music subscriber, which is like ten bucks a month, same as yeah. Spotify, you get access to all these artists who are out of work, no concerts to perform. So they're doing radio shows, like some of them daily. Right. So Josh Hami, that's the pronunciation oh, of his right. name. Yeah. I didn't know that <laughs> until mm-hmm. I listened to his show. I always thought it was Josh Holm, but it's Josh Holm. I thought it was that too, yeah. Yeah, of of Queens of the Stone Age, Mm -hmm. does the Alligator Hour. And it's seasonal. So he does seasonal. And these are almost like podcasts. I mean, he's playing music, but some of them he's interviewing guests, you know? They're super fast. It's not not at all a weekly endeavor. No, his is. When he's doing it, when he's doing it it seasonally, I think he's doing it every week. Got it. I uh, thought you were you were saying like, but you're proud of us for for grinding it out. No, what I'm saying is I'm down. I'm I'm saying there are a lot of of podcasts out there that aren't con- as consistent as that, and we're keeping up with some of the the pros by being yeah. consistent every week. Hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. You know. So what 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 are we talking about tonight? Well, first things first, uh, I want everyone out there right now to stop every single thing you're doing. If you're driving, pull over to the side of the road, go to youtube.com, search for the Emergent Gamer Podcast and subscribe so we can hit 100 subscribers and get our URL to make it easier for you guys to find us to keep doing that in the future. Uh, We have our whole shows up there. We have breakouts, sections, chunks, all kinds of stuff, and who knows what in the future. So follow that for sure. And also rate us on uh, wherever you listen. And with that fun stuff out of the way, um, we're going to be talking about uh, the big the big thing that happened literally just today. Uh, not, it's not massive news, but it's like a fun little right. comma in, in the consistent story of this uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Like five, hours, drama. five hours ago. This five dropped. hours ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, the Cyberpunk development team and uh, specifically their, uh, their founder and CEO – I'm not going to be able to pronounce his name. Martian, Martian Iwinski. I'm trying yeah, to good, not butcher you, his you name. You did a great job. Yeah. Um, it's he came out, had a whole video, five-minute long video, describing the problems, the causes, taking blame, all that good stuff. And they dropped a, a roadmap as well. So we're going to get into that a little bit later and kind of unpack what that means. Because uh, it's not a very uncommon thing these days for games to drop and then drop a roadmap along yeah, we, with a we, nice, we don't... nice big fat I'm sorry. We don't want to just talk about that. We want to actually go into detail about, I don't know, just yeah. recount some of the other ones that we've gotten. I mean, my personal and experience. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into I it. Can we'll recount, it's viable. I can recount. I can recount plenty about my personal experience with Fallout seventy six, and Trip Zero is probably going to talk a little bit about his experience with Destiny. Sure. Yeah, we got a lot of other examples too. It's it's been a pattern for a long time in video games. Uh, but first, Felix, what have you been up to? What's your week been like? So. I I'm, I bounce back and forth between Fallout seventy six and Cyberpunk currently, but mm-hmm. I am. Let's say I'm. Let how should I phrase this? I'm. I'm not actually dipping my feet in the pool, the various pools of other mm-hmm. video games quite yet, but I I've I've I've, I've strolled by. I'm essentially 
preparing my machine for the inevitable next gameplay that I'm going to do, whatever I'm going to do. Because okay. now I have these two super current consoles, super duper yeah. current comp consoles with all this good hardware. Mm -hmm. And my mind's going, okay, I don't want to just rehash all these old games in the previous state. I want to do something to prove the performance of the new machines. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, what you know, what kind of games can do that? I'm, I'm pro like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to try and play Ghost of Tsushima on a higher, whatever the higher setting is, maybe high quality or whatever. Sure. On my PS5 at some point. Um, and then the other thing I was thinking about doing on the the Xbox, and I, I, I guess I chatted with you a little bit through the Emerging Gamer Discord about this, as I was contemplating prop, po possibly doing a mod load order again for Sp uh, Skyrim Special Edition. Mm -hmm. um, and I had asked your opinion through the, um, and I'm glad that I have you just here on the podcast because now I can just ask you live on our you show. Can, yeah, you can ask me questions yeah, um, for sure. And I, I wanted to, so the question I had asked you in the Emerging Gamer Discord was, okay, I, here I am with this new console. Do you believe that a mod load order that I create, provided I follow all the fucking rules of mod loadouts? There's a lot of rules. Yeah. Provided I follow all those, do you think I'm going to struggle with something very specific that I've mentioned on this show before that I don't know if you've ever experienced, but I've experienced it, mod lag, where eventually down the road, thousands of hours into a save, when you've really packed it in, your mods start to lag in performance over time. I've never personally experienced that. Can right. you tell me a little bit more about what that like what you mean when you say your mods lag? Like how do you know it's like Frostfall? A mod? The greatest example is you brought up Frostfall maybe last episode or maybe we were yeah. talking about it in another context, but Frostfall is this phenomenal Skyrim mod, which incidentally I just watched a video today and learned that they came out with the survival mod, like the developers of Skyrim actually created a mod for their own game called survival They're the ones that did survival it's called survival mode yeah survival yeah you, is, I, I i use that that's the mine, one I'm pretty sure that has like the the reason i know this is made by them is is because i was watching a video where somebody was talking about it it's the one where you clearly distinctly see it's still the one bar that you use for health and stamina and magicka but you get like a red or black like line that forms in the opposing direction for like when you're low oh, on, on fatigue. No. So there's one that was evidently created. I don't, it might be PC only. I have no idea. But there was one that I was watching a video that was specifically created because this video was dated May of 2020. Mm -hmm. May 11th of 2020 was when this video I was watching. Um, but evidently this was a mod that was created by the developers of Skyrim that was released um, by the team. And it's a, it basically, from what I observed, rips off Frostfall. Like it rips it off. It's you don't What's have to the... install Frostfall if you install this survival mod. Do you just like have to like struggle? Is, do they just add like negative? No, I just to I just liked after, how the like you get I, tired or something. It does. It does. Okay, so it does. It definitely does cold, mm -hmm. and uh, seems to do the coldness regionally better than the Frostfall. That's what I observed. It, it felt like it in the video because I, I played with Frostfall. This just seemed like it was, but it does a lot of the same stuff. It's almost like they took the UI decisions made by the Frostfall guys. Interesting. And yeah. just, just, I mean, in fact, the guy in the video I was watching um, described it as such. Like they s just stole this from the Frostfall. It was, the guy that I, I like watching videos for, his name's uh, on YouTube, his name's ESO. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like a huge uh, YouTuber who likes to give you like the best builds for uh, Elder Scrolls Online, the best builds for Skyrim, the best builds for Cyberpunk. So he does all these like really cool build videos. When I talked about the Cyberpunk experience that I had, and he, I told you about the guy who found the the who's made the Widowmaker kill with four million yeah. damage. He's the guy yeah, who came yeah. up with that. Um, but he was gotcha. saying that this mod felt like it was just theft. Of the mod developers, like, interesting. Th but anyway, what I liked about the UI of it, though, is it, it's more natural to the Skyrim UI because what happens is you don't have an extra bar; you have just one. It's very much like Fallout. You have 
the one bar, like, you know, the radiation grows on your health yeah. meter, and then you just have less of a health meter. That's exactly mm -hmm. how it works in this mod. And for, for being frozen, getting cold, yeah. and then also for fatigue. And they're not separate things. I, I don't. In fact, I don't even remember if Frostfall has fatigue. Does it? I don't think so. Yeah, because well, what well, so fatigue yeah, doesn't even, affect. Yeah, uh, uh, it's not a Frostfall thing that I that I use that has a fatigue element. I use a mod called I Need, and I Need makes right. you eat and drink. And if I don't eat and drink, then I do take penalties to like my overall health, stamina, all that stuff. So this survival mod is all of that. And you only have to install the one mod. So yeah. I, it, they kind of dicked over those other mod com mod developers. I mean, I, I got to look into it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, all the numbers that I saw when I went to reinstall all these looked like they were like, pretty beefy. All the all the separate mods that I have. Right. So, and it was we'll called. See. It was like I said. It was called survival mod. But with going back to round back to my point with frostfall and specifically the campfire mod. Mm -hmm. So I would go to lay the campfire, right? And this was many, many hours into a save file. This might be over yeah. 100 hours into a save file. And what I observed was I'd lay it, and then it wouldn't show up for, like, 60 seconds. Right. It just wouldn't show up. And I was like, what Could the fuck is happening? Could you move around the world? You're, I, you, I, was you not affected. There? I was not affected by it. But I would I would literally start moving around. Why isn't it, what, why isn't it showing up? And it would, like, then, like, a minute later, show up. And sometimes I'd clip into it. Because I'm like, I'm hmm. fucking, what the fuck? It I mean, you, you could be moving up. around all yeah. entirely on yeah. your own. The world wasn't laggy. Things weren't the like The world jittery. was fine. The game was fine when I played like standard quests and things like yeah. that. But when I got around the uh, something that affected the world via mod, it delayed. It had this insane delay and I started reading. And I learned that there's something called mod lag that can occur. And it, and it only happens until... Until you've played the save file at some crazy amount of hours, something to do with data compiling upon data, data compiling upon upon data type shit. Yeah. Um, that ends up creating this effect where there's just like super amounts of lag. And hmm. if you didn't know, if you don't know about it, then I don't think you'll be able to speak on whether the new hardware. Would yeah, I, have I, a difference I feel that. like I wouldn't at all. And I was actually just yeah. going to say after hearing your explanation of it. That sounds like it may be a thing that's that's literally inherently how console mods may work, depending on save file look uh, amount right. and duration, and not like a CPU thing. The, the, so the original, it may be the same experience. The original reason why I quit using mods on console is because I saw a severe disadvantage being on console and not having what they call on the PC console commands. Because right. what you have the ability to do with console commands... I don't have the ability to use on a console. <laughs> like, right, I exactly. don't have the ability to command my console like you can do a PC. Because you can yep. go in, you can see what's wrong with the, the, the file, like if you're savvy enough. If you, mm -hmm. use a player. you can type, you can make sure things are installed properly. You've got right. all kinds of power with a so, console. So you have the ability to go in and fix a potential mod lag issue, like according to these videos and forums mm -hmm. that I was in. Um, and I don't have that power. And that's why I said there's no point in doing this and putting all this effort out if I'm going to get this result. Because, I'm, I'm right. like I said, I'm not breezy with this game. I love this game. I have a, 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 a native no mod Skyrim save file that's 400 plus hours. That's the kind of hours I put into it. Um, you know, you, you recall the one um, where I did everything, where I walked everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do. I yeah. call it my proximity playthrough, where whatever yeah. I run into is what I do. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, no horses like, allowed here. Just literally yeah, yeah. bumping around the world. No, no, I did, I definitely did horses. I did horses, and I did the, I did the stage. Oh, I was I was thinking more of like the like the instant warp cart where you could pay the guy. He'll he'll just take you. Uh, to no, a, I did do stand. that too. No, I thought oh, that did was, you. That was valid. No, I'm, I'm going to stop guessing about your playthrough. Dude. And just here's what's really it. funny: <laughs> this this survival mod thing forces you to that. To okay. the exact rules of my playthrough, you can't fa when you put this 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 Bethesda um, approved like survival mod on. This guy was saying in the video that it forces you to only be able to walk, ride a horse, or take the carts in towns. Yeah, because you can't just click a city and appear there. Nope. Yeah. So it's okay. Neat. But 
that so that's what I started doing. I started like thinking about what games I could play on these new, on this new hardware, and I was thinking about doing that. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I've just been playing. You know, finally met Pan Am t- tonight. Yeah, dude. How's that? How's that mission? I mean, I just I'm finally now going to go the story route and do all the story missions. I finished every single side quest. I got the trophies for every region. You're fully done every single region's side uh, quest. Yeah, other than the Easter egg side quests that could show up whenever. Sheesh. There's there's half a dozen um, or maybe even more um, side quests that don't count toward trophies that are just Easter egg side quests. Yeah. Like, did you do the one with um, – did you meet the guy that's in the alley who's like a conspiracy nut job? Like he, you, you know, Wearing the trash bag? Yeah, he's like a parody of like a QAnon, QAnon nut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah do you – um. I didn't actually do his quest, did I? I can't remember. Um, that's a streamer. That's Co Carnage, one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. Oh yeah, that's him. That's his. That's his face. That's his motion capture. That's his voice. Yeah, he went out to uh to Poland multiple times to be put into the game. Uh, so that's a fun little fact. So that's a, but that's a you know that ends up having a quest like an Easter egg. Quest. Yeah, yeah. I think I just didn't like you know bite. I didn't buy. I didn't pick the quest. Yeah, I didn't go all the way down. You got to go there. back to him at least. You got to go back to him. I don't know if I did everything right to get the final quest, or if you just get the final quest eventually. But like, yeah, you go back to this guy. I probably went back to him about five or six times, and each time I go and talk to him, you hear a bit of dialogue of him ranting and raving, doing the conspiracy shit, and then he says, "Can you give me a little donation?" And every single time, I picked the most amount. Yeah. So I like I picked like it was, one time it was like 100 bucks. The next time it was like, you know, 200. The last time I remember the number was specifically 666, mm-hmm. 660 uh, euros or whatever. Yeah. Um, And I paid him. And then that's when it changed. That's when there were two guys standing next to me who came up to listen as well. And mm-hmm. they were like notable gang members from Maelstrom. Yeah. Gang. And they started listening. And they said, "Stop spreading our lies about us, da, 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 and all this shit." And like, mm-hmm. and then the dialogue changes, and he goes, "Do you believe me talking to me?" And yeah. then if you respond with, you can respond with, "Yeah, shut the fuck up, man, and join the guys." Yeah. And m- more than likely, you kill that character, mm-hmm. that guy, or you can kill the two guys. So mm-hmm. of course, I used my quick axe to suicide both of them. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then at that point, he says, "Thanks for helping me." Now here's this other mission. Go to the spot and meet, you know, find out the the conspiracy. So, Did, was it true? Was he telling the truth? Spoilers. Uh, I could spoil it. Um, he. It, it's really funny because you go there, you meet at the spot. Real people show up, but ultimately they end up being corpo nutbags who mm. think they're in a conspiracy, and really they're just they're just doing more corpo sleazy corpo shit. Right and. Um, after you fight them, kill them, whatever, you take the disc that they're trading and you find out on it is just more cor- corpo espionage bullshit. Mm-hmm. And then um, Johnny appears and Johnny starts commenting on like, there it is. Everyone expects there to be, you know, some magic magic wizard or something at the end of the, the, um, the golden road or whatever. Mm-hmm. And in reality, it's just it's just a, a, I think his quote was. It's a story that doesn't have, it's just like life. It's a story that doesn't have a finale, you know? Yep. (laughs) Yeah. More, more of the same, just open-ended. She went on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. More open-ended shit to just fucking find. And you go from one rabbit hole to the next, right? It just keeps going forever. Um, So that was really neat. Um, Nice. But yeah, I got all the side quests done and got the trophies for all the regions. And I I guess the only thing fucking left would be to just rock the story. I know. Oh, there's one cyber psycho that needs to show up because I have to finish Pan Am stuff. That's what I read online. But I have one cyber psycho left to do, and I also got all, a... I got all the murals too. Oh, nice. Yeah, the uh, the tarot card. The tarot murals. card murals. Yeah. So I found those all over the map. You're in for a treat, man. Pan Am's quest line was my absolute favorite of the entire game, just front to back. So it's uh, I think it's good that you saved it for when you did, because you got to experience a lot of the game as it is and then you're about to have in my opinion the best the best story yeah it's hers 
and to, to be frank with you, I think I, I went down that path only because I cheated a little and I watched a lot of strategy videos to get the most out of the gameplay before I really dug into it deeply. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, the, and all of them recommended that the all of them said that the beauty and the magic of this game is really in the side quests. That's what that's what all of the reviews were saying. And I was like, OK, well, I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll just like if the game permits it, I'll just stop what I'm doing wherever I am. And where I was was right before meeting Pan Am. Right. And I said, I'll just leave it right there. And then I'll go do everything regionally, do all the little uh, police assault things where you oh, have yeah, to just every take little some... call on the radio, yeah. that kind of stuff. And yeah. that can be annoying, except whenever I approached each one, I mentally played it a different way. Like right. rather than go in guns blazing every single time and kill every dude there. I said, how can I kill these more, these dudes in more creative ways? And as but, I went I mean, along, you, you have to you have yeah. to do stuff like that at the end of the day, honestly. As I went along, I just started unlocking. I really put all my points. I went heavy into quick hacks, and I wanted to. I wanted to upgrade the quick hack to the maximum I can do. And in order to do that, you have to upgrade um, intelligence to level twenty. Right. So I put most of the points in, into intelligence and technical ability, and then ultimately. Um, so really, I'm doing a crafting slash quick hack build. That's what it is. Right. I'm in a, I'm doing a min max where I'm maxing those two points. And then next time I go through, I'm probably not going to put any points into that. I'm going to do like melee or right. Probably. I think I'm going to do melee. Yeah. You have to play very differently on a, on, on another playthrough to get different skills because you're capped in any of your skill trees by right. your overall attribute level. So a guy today specifically laid it out. He said the best you can do is 20 and 20 in two overall arcing skills. And then he said he recommended then do another one at 18 and then the other two would be nine. And he said that's the maximum effective uh, because and this I didn't know until I actually watched this guy's video. If you leave one of the main skills, what are they called? They're called um, they're called attributes attributes. If you leave one of the attributes at, like, say, level six or whatever, mm -hmm. and you never put points into it the max you'll ever be able to get for the um, – for the okay, so you have – did you notice that you have the attribute point at six? Then mm -hmm. you have – you go into the tree. You your, have – Your, you your have skills are capped at your attribute max right, level. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. You, can you can never have like – like, like you said, quick – you said quick hacking is under intelligence. You can never be quick hack level seven if your intelligence is level six. Right, Exactly. And I didn't, I didn't realize that until you'll also much lose later. out on experience if you don't increase your attribute. Right, like, which means your you level will be capped, and you won't earn any more while you're playing that kind of content and that kind of style that would normally give you experience. Right, and he said, which means you end up running, you end up losing out on perk points because that mm -hmm. that um, skill bar gives you perk gives you, points exactly. each time you level it up. So it's like, yeah, in that respect, man, I. I got to give the, the I know we're going to talk a little bit of foul on them later, but like mm -hmm. I got to give them props, man. The way this game, how smart the the UI and interface is for like doing the leveling and min maxing and shit that you're going to be able to do in this. is just I don't know, man. It's a lot of power. I know it's, it, it's, it's OP. It yeah. results in an OP play. Yeah. My problem. Yeah. With that yeah. is that. uh there's very little incentive for me to go all the way to 20 other than pure curiosity as to what I could do because <laughs> I'm really goddamn effective at like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 in any given area. So like you, you beyond are. that, it's just like, why? If, if you went all the way through, right? If you could do some incredible shit at level 20, but things really started to get spicy around 15, 16, 17. And it was like that for every, every skill tree. And they kept the exact same system where you could not get everything and you were limited and you had to make meaningful choices. But again, it was really, really worth it to go down a certain path at the end yeah. because that's where all the power was. Then I would love the skill system. I, I know what you mean. Um, I think what you mean is you, you're looking more for pushback from the world. 
that's what you're looking for. Yeah, and I you, want I want it would like, be it would be meaningful to truly if, earn and and yeah. and feel rewarded for my time if that you, I put if in. If you took the time to like put all your shit into quick hacks, and then let's say the rest of the world, um, got good at everything else, but the hacking, but defending against hacking. Mm-hmm. You know, like that, then it would be like you always had to rely on your quick hacks in order to get through stuff. Then that would make it more worth it because it's like you had to, you have to push kind of through a, a very specific doorway on every incident. I mean, that also might make the game a little bit boring, but um, sure. Because then I mean, you, it, you wouldn't be locked out of other skills no, entirely. Like right, you know. right. No, no. But, but I mean, just the the, um, uh, the way for the world to push back and make the things that you didn't choose. Uh, w- way more, way less right. effective. You know what I mean? Like you said, uh, and like the because... guy that you were watching spread the points out. You have a lot of like diversity, and you can actually spec into some pretty high level, like attributes and skill trees at the end of the day. But the the bottom line is, you don't have to. You don't but... have to to rip through the content and to feel like you're overpowered. You to, can do a quarter of all of that to reinforce and get your, to that point. Reinforce your point exactly. That mission I was playing that we were talking through right before the we started the podcast where I'm with Pan Am and we're going to kill that dude. In that mission, I got I was just trying to get you know, I was I was playing it where I was just quick hacking every dude. You weren't watching that, but like that's what I was doing. I was just playing it where I'll just quick hack every dude in this area. Well, I started that way, but it was taking too long. Because I have to wait mm-hmm. for the quick hacks to occur. And then in order to get through it so I could finish it so we could start the podcast, I just switched to a gun that I had. And, and, just and I've all. never put any points into guns. And I right. literally one shot all the dudes that were left. They were all dead. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're talking about there, in that scenario, it should be only the quick hacks that, get, that give me an advantage. Exactly. Right. That's what you right. And I, 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 can, I can I can vouch for that. Like that's definitely w- what's the flaw in their system. Yeah. But anyway, uh, enough about me. How about yourself, sir? Yeah. So last week uh, I mentioned that I was doing a playthrough of Skyrim Special Edition with the mods, yeah, like we, we talked, talked about, about earlier. That. Yeah. Um, that didn't last a week. I was very amped on it, but like at the end of the day, I was like, yeah, it's this still it's still the same game. You know, I just got to eat more and drink more, and it's it's fun and it's immersive and. Uh, but you, it's you, not really. You've been there and done the story, and I've been there, done that, all that kind of stuff. You know, I was like, well, what else do I feel like playing? Um, and then I remember that Stardew Valley had an update recently, had a big patch, big update, big content push. Uh, One point five added a whole bunch of things to the game, and I was like, you know, what? I haven't played Stardew Valley in a while. Let me go into this game and start a brand new, fresh save on one of the new farms that you can do in this game. And let me just let me rip it. Let me get back into it. And I also landed on that decision because I might potentially one day try to speed run Stardew Valley, like try to have that be a, like a little little content could, channel. Because I just spent all week watching uh, Awesome Games Done Quick, which happened yeah. last week. You gonna the, join uh, the? Uh, you gonna join the tour, tourney? Are you getting in I'd, there? I'd love to. I'd love to, man. I love watching the speed runs, and I think it's an incredible charity event. And I always love just it's my favorite time. Well, there's one in January, and one in, in July. My favorite times of the year when they do these marathons. But I was watching the uh, the current world record uh, Stardew Valley speedrun holder. Uh, his name is the Habu, and it's like a two hour something run. And I'm like, that's not too bad. Like no. to get around like between three, two to three hours. Like that's that's something you could like work on. And like get get pretty good at, and Dude, I was like, this it, might be it, a good good toe it, to dip into the speed running world. Okay, okay here's a, an example of your of your um, your 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 light approach to speed running. Mm-hmm. You you can do like Bloodborne in like 25 minutes or some shit like that. <laughs> right, right, right. But but, but see, would I, I want to? Fuck no. <laughs> I want this little like perfect like window of time. I want I want a nice chunk of time. But I don't want like an 18 hour Final Fantasy speed run, you know, like I want to just like right. have this have like a nice meaty pile of content, but also like breezy enough that like you go watch in a night. But do you feel that a two hour Stardew Valley run is breezy compared to some other speed runs? Yeah, but is it for, be, for the kind of game that it is and for the kind of like experience that I think I would want? The nice thing about Stardew Valley for me 
is that it has a lot of the aspects that you've, you've heard me talk about in relation to cyberpunk that it's lacking, you know, and that the things that I found in Skyrim that I liked, uh, mainly immersion, immersion, options, choice, the ability to do whatever you kind of want within any given like playground, which a game is, you know, just any yeah. given sandbox. Um, but like all the people in, in Stardew Valley are, have just such an incredible depth of character and you get to know every single one of them, all depending on how much you talk to them and interact with them and hang out with them. And that's an experience that I don't get out of a game like Cyberpunk where I would want to live in that world even more. I can't like gain a really deep friendship with someone in that game no you you just have to pretend you're what you are in any action game as a protagonist you're just right. a merc you're always right. a merc we're a merc in every game we're never it, it's kind of tired at this point you're a merc in every game <laughs> it's very tired you're personally. never but yeah here's the thing you always have to be the merc because like right because the Merc has the most moral flexibility. Like, there's no other... I, I, no. There, you could write your way out of that hole 17 times over. Well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I've, another I've, aspect... I've, I've, I've been a Merc for so long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you really have. This is Felix um, Hergood, mercenary for hire. <laughs> yeah, digital merc baby. Digital merc. Another another fun aspect of Stardew that that appeals to me is like there's a really heavy RNG element to it as well. Like there's a lot of the game that is based on luck, and you even have a channel to watch on your TV every day that tells you how lucky the day is. You watch a fortune teller channel and it tells you how the spirits are feeling, I, which means you can you can choose to do certain things that may reward you better because it's a really lucky day. It, now that I have you right here. And we have time to talk. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked. You've mentioned this game numerous times. I've never played it. Mm -hmm. Can you just sell it to me for a second? Just can I sell you on Stardew Valley? Like, tell tell me what how it's played. Like, I can't even. I see the screenshots. I don't even understand it. Sure. <laughs> sure. So, sell it. Core, sell it for the audience as well. Sure. At the core of the gameplay, Stardew Valley is a nice, calm, relaxing, uh, pixel art farming game, right? You get tired of your job at a big corporate company. Your grandfather left you a plot of land and you say, I'm going to take him up on this offer. I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. I'm going to go start a farm and have no cares at all. No worries. I'm going to just plant a bunch of shit and live off of the land. You know? Okay. So you get there. You can do just that. You can, you can plant a farm, grow your crops, sell it to the guy down in the local, uh, the local, you know, general store. So it starts but real basic. You, like you, you find the supplies yeah, you, you're literally given a package of parsnips, and they tell you how to plant them, and they say, go from there. Okay. But the more you hang out in the town, the more you meet the townspeople. You get invited to, like, all the town's little events. You know, you, you maybe talk to uh, talk to someone a few times. They send you a letter with a recipe they like. They invite you to go hang out somewhere. Uh, you, there's this incredibly well-written and connected community in the game that exists with or without you. They all have their own schedules, do their own things around the valley. When you say pixel art, you're referring to like early Legend of Zelda. Yeah, this would look like a game that you they would probably fit on like a Super Nintendo, maybe. Okay, got it. All right. Yeah. Um, and there's different biomes in the world to explore. There's a whole beach area. There's mountains, and the game is so full of secrets and things that that are not told to you or apparent to you that only kind of uh, are unveiled later as you maybe upgrade all of your farming abilities by spending time farming or by going down certain quests. Can you, uh, uh, so there is questing. You leave your farm and go places. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you get, like, weapons? Yes. There's there's an entire mine system. There's a monster system. Uh, there is a desert. There's a desert that you can't even get to until you figure out how to get, like, a bus fixed that goes out there. And the game doesn't really tell you much of, of, of how to do this. What the game does tell you to do as you're guiding North Star for the vast majority that, that leads you to this end game point past the main story is there's a, there's a little community center and there is obviously a, a small little town store and there is a, a, a big Amazon like company called Joja Mart that really, <laughs> really, really wants to buy that plot of land and put a warehouse there. Oh, where you live, where the community center is. 
Oh, so, what you so what you need to decide is, am I going to go buy a Joja Mart membership and get all my seeds for really fucking cheap and just like shop there all the time and, and live my life, workshop, workshop? Or am I going to go to this community center and am I, and am I going to fix it? Am I going to give it what it needs? Am I going to rehabilitate this? Am I going to unite the town around this community center? That's and tell a morality Joja Mart choice. To go fuck off? Yeah. It is. It's not so much a morality choice because uh, there's really no benefits to Joja Mart. Like in games that have morality, usually like you get just as good things by going bad or good. You really get you really get dicked on if you if you try to say I want to try Jojo Mart. You don't get half the good shit that you get from doing the community center. Uh, but cool. once you do the community center, every um every time you upgrade it, and the upgrading is done by like completing bundles, because the game is is based on seasons, right? So like every season, maybe it'll have like here's the spring crops. Bring one of each spring crop to the center, or like. If you're fishing, bring all these river fish to the bundle, and you finish a bundle. Every bundle gives you like a reward. Maybe a bridge somewhere gets fixed. Maybe you can go to the desert now. Maybe you get some item that lets you like farm times a million. Maybe you fix a greenhouse. You can grow trees or, or plants regardless of season in your greenhouse. How, how is this game different than that other game that came out on Switch that everyone like sat and played during quarantine? Oh, uh, Animal Crossing. Are they different? Similar? They're they're very different. They're yeah. very different. Okay. They're very different. Animal Crossing doesn't have a uh, a story, really. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, it just has like a little island that you can you can grow things on. You can plot land. You can you can carve things up and and kind of live this day in day out very minimal existence, which is which is a great vibe for a lot of people. Um, but what Stardew Valley offers is it's the farming and the chill aspect on top of like the ability to generate these systems of like crafting and money making that people really like. Like you can make like kegs, for example, and you can put fruit in, in kegs and casks to make like wine or beer or fermented things. And every like fruit value will make give you a different like product value. So you can set up these gigantic production lines that eventually can make you like tons of money to then obtain other things or buy other stuff that's added in updates and patches. And, and like there's an en nearly an endless amount of things to do end game that takes so much investment to a level that you don't have to touch at all that can keep hardcore players engaged beyond the farming mechanics well i mean that sounds like the kind of end game that most people desire mm -hmm. you know you get bored after a while it, and it really it really really nails it and with these updates and patches and things there's all kinds of new secrets that are put in the game that, that they don't tell you about. And it provides value to people that, that already have these end game systems because it gives them something to strive for. Like a lot of times in a game that's ongoing, you may like feel the need to start over all the time because there's just nothing to do once you've reached the end game, regardless of how many updates or patches come out. This game says, okay, cool. There's this thing you can buy. This thing is like $2 million, which will take you like literally in game years to earn but this thing is new now and if you want to see what this thing does earn the money and pick it up because we're not going to tell you we're just going to figure it out you know <laughs> there's like literally a guy living in the sewer you find eventually and he sells you some real shady shit like it just the game goes into some real wacky places that you wouldn't expect which is also part of the fun it just like you're constantly peeling back these layers of this game that surprises you around every corner and that's why i keep coming back to it because not only are the systems and mechanics and like really solid but there's this element of mystery that that keeps me going for hours would this game be considered a type of JRPG or no? No, not at all. It's not. It's a Western. No, it's 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 an action game and a farming game, because if you are fighting things, you're only ever pressing a button to swing a sword and to move into dodge. So if you're looking from like for like the action perspective, it's purely action. You're not in a menu. You're not selecting items. There's no turn based things. Right, right, right. If you go in the if if you go in the mines, you're gonna have bats flying at you, slimes are gonna be jumping at you. You have to like literally dodge, move, and and swipe them with your sword. Oh, okay, cool. So it's an action based adventure game. When you're I in was that more section. on the, I was more on the nose for the action adventure yeah. part when I said Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. It what plays. Le Legend of Zelda lacks is the farming aspect. Yes. Right. Yeah, cool. and what game well, this game doesn't have like you know in depth dungeons and puzzles in a centralized area like Zelda would have, but right, right. It's a pretty good comparison. Otherwise, it definitely controls and plays a lot like Zelda. That's cool. But it's fun, man, and and I'm feeling really good about this uh this current playthrough. So well, I got we'll a see. Switch, and I did buy. There's a couple of games that I bought. I don't recall what they're called right now, but they were like, <laughs> you know, cheap like ten dollar games or whatever. Yeah. And I installed them. 
I probably got to play those first. One of these days, I might consider that. You might, you, dude, you, you might like Stardew. You never know when I'm gonna like something. I really don't. I feel like I'm like eighty percent good on your on your likes, but yeah. then something may just like hit the right nail. But, I mean, I mean, I caught you off guard with Civilization recently. I did. I, yeah, I, I would never got, got I dug never into that. that. But why? Like, after the fact, it makes a lot of but sense. You but you also know how much I love history, though. Right. You know? So like, right. That's where that comes from. Like, I know, mm -hmm. you know, I love how the game civilization will introduce you to like weird historical facts like right you know it's like the invention of the stirrup that like changed history <laughs> right exactly <laughs> you know what i mean like the minute they invented the stirrup it was like there's so much they could do because now they could just fire their bow from fucking horseback mm -hmm. and that, and yeah, that literally changed a lot changed so many battles <laughs> <laughs> this game the stardew has a lot of uh similarities to uh, a game like civilization and that it makes you do like the one more turn aspect oh yeah 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 because you can only do so much in a day right but maybe you feel really accomplished and you're like oh shit dude tomorrow this thing will be done and i can sell this and plant the next thing so you go to sleep in your bed the game saves you hear the little rooster you get up in the morning check the tv for what kind of luck you're going to have head out in the world you got another day on you dude and you're just in you're just in and how long does a day how morning. long does a day take in if you in, don't in if you don't go into any pause menus or if you just if you just wake up and stand there it's 15 minutes that's how long a day takes oh okay but that's that gets extended out because like you're in your menus you're pausing you're talking to people yeah just uh, like when civilization things, when you're yeah. when you're like fishing like that little pause the tan the time when you're reeling a fish in obviously yeah civilization it's like you start off you got like four two units and yeah. it's like you know 500 turns later you have you know how many units like you probably mm -hmm. have like 70 units to make decisions on yeah it's like yeah you know, exactly like, fuck dude i know and then i get the mech robot you know like mm -hmm. did you know they added that into civilization Me like actual mech robots no yeah like um what's the what are they called that japan's obsessed with they're trying to build one gundams right gundams essentially gundams, yeah in the in the ultimate end game, you get a Gundam esque Pacific Rim type super robot. Nice. That's that's like it's not a nuclear bomb. That's the end of the game. Now with the DLC. I like that. Yeah. You got to build a robot. Yeah, you, you build but, yeah. robot technology. It's great. But yeah, dude, my uh, my long term uh, plan for starting right now, I'm doing a, my own challenge for this run is to finish the community center in one year which is really tough because you don't get to plant some things until year two. So you have to rely on some different systems. So you to did, be able to you get started a new playthrough. This is I did. I did start fresh for this one. Yeah. I think you on said my, that on my, earlier. Yeah. Well, I was like touting the benefits of not restarting and using like your massive farm to like check out some new stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what my switch is for. But the update is not out on consoles yet. It's only PC. Oh, it has version 1.5 right so now. So you have the, a version of this on your switch and on your PC. Yeah, I own the I own a PS4 copy too because because when, <laughs> when it was getting printed, it came with a really nice map and like a. You're like sounding a, a little sick like me, Trip Zero, buying games. Look, in four different places. Every single person that that plays video games in the world, nearly like ninety five percent of them, has bought Skyrim a bunch of times. Oh, God. This game, this game is like is getting up there in how many times I bought Skyrim. It's nearing that capacity. The amount of times I bought Fallout seventy six. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> once was too much <laughs> i think the uh buying the the item bags or whatever that counts for two more times each it's a total of four i right. think you can count that you bought it four times you've given the money in four large chunks essentially oh wait uh wait what item bags wait what were Isn't you that, don't you have an item bag where you can oh no am i thinking of elder scrolls online no you're thinking of oh the, you mean the craft bag you mean the subscription service yeah, I guess. I am thinking of both things, but I'm calling them different things. Yeah, you subscription pay for... service. Subscrip subscription service is a hundred a year. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I don't pay for the subscription service twice anymore. I don't. I stopped. Oh, no? I stopped it on the PlayStation. Okay. All right. That's uh, good. In order to renew my my yearly subscription on Elder Scrolls Online, which <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm not playing Elder Scrolls Online current. <laughs> well, I'm paying for Final Fantasy XIV, and I haven't touched that in months, so we yeah. all got something. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm definitely going to get back on the Elder Scrolls stuff. 
Uh, we all say that, dude. I say that about Final Fantasy. I'm not going to do it probably for, for uh, a couple of months. Speaking of while we're on it, I did read an article uh, or watched a speculative. Uh, uh, did you see the tweet that Bethesda tweeted from the Elder Scrolls, not online, but Elder Scrolls um, Twitter account? Is it about the potential for Hammerfell as the location for Elder Scrolls? They tweeted Scrolls a 6? map with a riddle. Yeah. yeah. You saw that. Okay, I did because I was looking up info about Elder Scrolls. I was like, "What's up with the six? Like, when are we going to get it? What's and yeah?" The ESO guy, the ESO guy's video, the guy I was mentioning earlier, uh, who does the good cyberpunk videos, he uh, figured out because of his his knowledge of lore is insane. Like, he knows yeah. so much about the lore of the Elder Scrolls world, and he was able to figure out that in that shot that they have that shows a coastline. He yeah. figured out what coastline that is on the fucking on the goddamn oh, really? Tamriel map. Yeah, That's he figured amazing. out what coastline, and then he figured out that the the name from the purchase they made, not the purchase, the um, uh, they had submitted a trademark for mm-hmm. uh, the name Redfall. Yeah. So he thinks it's going to be called Elder Scrolls Six Redfall. Oh, that's pretty cool because I had heard Hammerfell is like another big theory, but I like did well, he then, use no, the coastline Re- to figure Re- it out? Redfall references to the native race that comes from Hammerfell. Oh, the oh, Red oh, Guards, got you. the Red Guards. The, oh, okay, there and we go. Redfall See, I'm, I'm is about the bad at Elder Scrolls, <laughs> comparatively yeah. speaking. But so, so Red Red um, Fall is referring to the Red Guard falling that oh, period in history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he thinks, that, he thinks dude. there's going to be in that game. There's going to be an event in the middle of the story that you get involved in that is similar to the Civil War in Skyrim. It's going to be like you either aligning with the Red Guard that's falling or the, like the whoever their aggressor is, which I think yeah. is the uh, Old Mary. No, no, Old Mary. The um, the Th- Thal Thalmor. The Thalmor. Yeah. Well, both of those. That was the people from Skyrim too. So maybe there's always the dickheads. Oh Th- no, Thalmor! No, the Thalmor are the reason why the Red Guard fell. That remember that quest that's in Skyrim where the uh, the woman's being chased by two Red Guard. Oh, I just that's the one you get in the beginning of Warrun. Yeah, she's I didn't like a, do it, but yeah. But I I think in the dialogue it's revealed that like those people are trying to get her to come back. I think because they're worried that she's going to get murdered by the Thalmor. Mm-hmm. So it's all like I think the Red Guard and the Thalmor don't get along. <laughs> Well, we'll see. We have I'm not years a and years and years. I'm not a lorist of uh, of Elder Scrolls. Oh, don't. A lorist. Isn't that what they call it? <laughs> I have no idea what they call it, but I don't think it's lorist. <laughs> I, I, it's the the, I heard the word lorik, which is to describe the, the Lorax. Is, that's a, that's a, that's no, a lor- Dr. Seuss book. L- lorik is L-O-R-I-C in reference to something that's, that's lore heavy. It's very lorik. Speaking of things that are lore heavy. Yeah. Let's do it. Cyberpunk 2077 today. Oh God! Told us. Is this our transition? Was, was that a segue? That are coming out in the future. That was a, that was segue. a segue. Thank you. It wasn't, but I just had to pull it out of there. I had to pull it out of the Elder Scrolls talk. Uh, yeah, we got an official update on their future plans for Cyberpunk 2077, along with a video of the CEO uh, apologizing for for what they had done. And for the half cup game that they released and why they didn't test it on previous consoles. He said they did and it looked great. They were blindsided. They had no idea. Yeah, but they're committed to fixing things for the future. That's the things that they said. And they also released a uh, a roadmap for this year for 2021. And uh, I don't know if you've if you've seen this. Have you seen this roadmap? I did. A couple things (laughs) on the roadmap I like a lot. Uh, One thing on the roadmap kind of pisses me off. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. What are you looking at at this roadmap to like or to dislike? Because there's nothing here. <laughs> right, right. They didn't there's, put anything. There's nothing here. That, no, that's it that's says, the one thing. It's got three big chunks on the timeline. We have release, which we've already passed. We've got 2021, <laughs> which, we're, which we've just started, right? And we've got 2022 at the end. So between release and now, they've highlighted in green patch 1.04, 1.05, 1.06. And then in 2021, with no week markers, month markers, Nothing. anything, it just says has a line with a dot, patch 1.1, 1.2. <laughs> and then a big black chunk that's highlighted 
that just says multiple updates and improvements all the way to 2022. (laughs) They've told us literally nothing. They didn't tell us with this roadmap. That's a that is a shit sandwich of a roadmap right there. The only thing that you can interpret from this is that the free next gen console update is going to be coming in the second half of the year. And we garnish only no, but we garnish that from both. We garner that. I I said garnish. I meant garner. We garner that from yeah by looking at that visual, but also he said it in the video. He does say it. He said in the video we. we uh, anticipate that the next gen update is coming in the latter half mm-hmm. of of twenty. See, I was able to suss that out just by looking at that, and I was like, "Why are those things in those positions? Yeah. Does that mean second half of the year?" And then I heard him say it in the video. Yes, but that was the only thing to me that was clear. Well, that's the thing. Timeline that pissed, That's what pissed me off because I'm like, "Fuck you, dude! I've had this console. I'm ready to go." <laughs> Yeah, second the game, half of the year. The is version aggressive. of the fucking game that you released works fine on my console. I'm ready. I'm sorry, people out there who have the older console who got fucked. Sorry. I'm ready. <laughs> I don't need to wait because your fucking ass has bought, bought the shit on the wrong console. I mean, they didn't because I'm only playing their version of the game. I'm playing previous right. gen version of the game. That's and what I'm look, playing. Look, in everyone's defense who bought this with a PlayStation 4, with an Xbox One, everything that we were told, including a legitimate statement that said, we're surprised at how well this runs on current-gen consoles. Those were, that was the exact words. That's what they had to go on. So, of course, they bought the game. Right. Um, it's, it's, but it's, it's fucking crazy to me that... That everybody, except for PC people, are playing a game that's supposed to be optimized for the PS4. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. Like, I don't it, even have the version of the game that you have, Trip Zero. Like, I right. don't have all the sliders and the cool shit to like utilize the performance of my hardware. Right? Correct. I don't have them. You don't because the version of the game was built for the PS4 and the Xbox One original, and yet, despite that, that's the one that's not working on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Correct. Right. So, so what does that tell you? Knowing now the information of what he says in the video, what does that tell you? And and by the way, I already said this on the show, but I'll say it again. Jay Prince kind of called this. And, uh, or maybe he called it from watching some kind of like uh, data data mining video or something that somebody said or whatever. But like, but um, he says in the video that they, in the way Jay Prince he didn't phrase it in the video this way, but the way Jay Prince phrased it uh, a couple months back, he said they pivoted, and his theory was they pivoted when they realized that there was a push for the new consoles like there was an obsession this time around Mm -hmm. with people pre-ordering like people started pre-ordering playstation 5s people started going crazy pre-ordering all you know all the buzz and hype and shit around the consoles went nuts they pivoted to optimize for the latter and to for the pc your experience and my experience on these next gen consoles so they pivoted to put their development into that and then because they didn't have enough time they, and this is the impression I got from the way he said it. This is, a, of course, a paraphrase. He said, then we pushed it through or something to the effect, like hoping it would just fucking <laughs> yes. work. Yes. He literally used the word hoping. Did he say hoping? Because I, I was trying to paraphrase. I definitely, uh, that word is ringing a bell in my brain. And I may have read it too, yeah. like in the Q&A section that's below the video. I think he literally said that they hoped. Yeah. At a certain point. So so it all it, it, the dots connect really well from what Jay Prince was saying because he thinks that they pivoted toward the development for the latter gen consoles, really pushing hard. They started development basically because that's all they had when their development started. They had the PS4 and the Xbox One. That's what they had seven years yeah. ago. And Here's then, a 
I, I have I have the quote I think is why I think I, I I wanted to hear the word hoping because this is almost hope. You want to hear what the question, what the answer is yeah, for yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question is uh this is the printed question and answer below the video on their website. Didn't you test out old gen consoles to keep tabs on the experience? And the answer is we did. As it turned out, our testing did not show many of the issues you experienced while while playing the game. As we got closer to launch, we saw significant improvements each and every day, and we really believed there it is. And believed, we really believed we'd deliver in the final day zero update. They had faith. He's literally saying they were testing. <laughs> he said they were testing uh, every single day, and we're only seeing improvements. There are people that I'm seeing on Twitter that are interpreting this as him, like, even though he says with his words verbally that, you know, I take responsibility, the leadership takes responsibility, that this little section here is low key throwing QA under the bus, oh. saying we were testing low key, and it looked fine. Low key, it's like full on him throwing QA under the bus. Why didn't you tell us these fucking bugs were right. there, you fucking right. pricks? We thought it was fine. It's their fault, you know? And I think that's kind of fucked up because um, who knows, man? Who knows what actually what was the, what the deal was? I take it a step further in my speculation because this is pure speculation. I got this from no video. But I feel, and I think this kind of, I think this kind of fucking, I think this clocks. I think when I say this, I feel that they piv- they did the pivot like Jay Prince suspected, they they pivoted towards pushing hard for PC and current-gen console development. They made it work great on them. And then they did enough work, 60% of the effort, 50% of the effort, whatever, enough to just mm-hmm. get it out, thinking that everybody in this winter season, this holiday season, were going to get their consoles. Because everyone went crazy for them. And just play it on the new shit. Right. And then COVID fucked them. COVID happened. Mm-hmm. And the people didn't get the consoles because of shipping or some kind of development problem or whatever. And because the consoles didn't get in everybody's hands, they couldn't buy it on the current gen console. So people said, well, this is a trustworthy company. I think we're fine buying it on the last gen console <laughs> mm-hmm. because they say they're not coming out with the next gen patch no. until next year in 2021. So they must have optimized the game they must have dude for this current gen. Why there's, don't there's I buy no it way? They didn't. Why don't I buy it? Because they're not coming out with the other one. So this has got to be the one that works, right? Mm-hmm. There's no other one. It's not like they said, we're releasing the next gen version and the current gen version. And you, you know, you people who are on the Xbox Series X and the PS5 should just, you know, buy the one for the next gen. We're not releasing two copies. We're releasing only one copy with the other one to come later. Well, if they're only releasing one copy, they probably got it right for all the consoles, right? Wrong. I feel like that's wrong. a great assumption. Fucking wrong. That's a, that's a great assumption. But I made think right there. my speculation is that COVID fucked them because they thought people would have these consoles it, in their fucking it, hands. It, COVID didn't fuck them. A they fucked themselves. Yeah, they fucked themselves, but yeah. COVID added fucking a sweet icing on that cake. <laughs> well, only, that nasty shit cake. The only thing that that would have done is, is, uh, is buckle their expectations to no, ship a yeah, game they, that they fucked themselves because better by accident because of better hardware. That's right. the only thing it would have changed. It doesn't change the fact that they mismanaged and the, misdeveloped. They fucked but... up the 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 the, key, the thing they should have been caring for the most, which right. is the, the older community, right. the older fans, but, the older. But we've harped on this a lot, and and we've done it in multiple weeks. We've done it a lot tonight too. So let's let's shift a little bit, uh, but just by saying that this is not brand new, this kind of pattern. No. Of releasing a game and then being like, oops, and then telling Dude, everyone that's playing your game, angry here's Joe. what to expect in the next couple years and months so that you keep playing and you believe that we're going to give you everything that we promised you originally. Uh, go out and watch it. Angry Joe's review on Cyberpunk. He sums up what we're going to talk about better than we did in his little sketches that he fucking does before his re- he does his actual review. You know, he does mm-hmm. like a 
thing where him and his friends like dress I'm up. actually not familiar with uh, with his content specifically. Okay. So but... Angry Joe always leads his video with some kind of skit that they perform that is usually a metaphor for the problem. So mm -hmm. the skit he chooses this time is fucking a guy in a cyberpunk t-shirt who is representing all of CD Projekt Red going right. to the principal's office. And the principal is are the fans. Sure. Right? And they're, and he's talking to him like, I can't believe what you did. You know, you, you, you know, you, you were such a good student. You were like a straight A <laughs> student. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, you're a straight A student and you got such good things going on. And he's like, what did I do? What did I do? What did you? And he, you know how principal would pull out paraphernalia that he found. Right. He pulls mm -hmm. out literally a thing that looks like a fucking crack pipe. <laughs> 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 and he pulls it out. And the crack pipe is DLC or uh, or the broken game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, where did you get this from? <laughs> where did you get this from? <laughs> Who's giving you this? Cut to earlier in the day, it's the guy wearing the CD Projekt shirt walking up as the representative of CD Projekt Red to a table of of Beth, a, a guy who who's wearing a Bethesda t shirt and a guy wearing an EA t shirt and a guy with the third one nice. I, I don't remember what the third one is but they're all like giving out drugs and the drugs are DLC microtransactions <laughs> Fuck yeah it. come on go yeah. ahead take it he's yeah. like I don't want to I don't want to yes you do <laughs> that's amazing and that and that's what what that's what we're we're dealing with here. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, I do. But all those examples are what we want to talk about. That that there's always a pro a promise of something, and then an apology after when it's just a fucking route. Yeah, I mean this this trend really started when uh when games started to come out that had an expectation of having a longer shelf life. You know, like usually a game would drop and it would just be that'd be it. Besides, like a sports game or a Call of Duty with like a multiplayer component. If you bought a game that had a story, that's it. You'd be done playing the game, and there was nothing when, else to do. When do you think, in your memory, it started to shift? Like, what what pushed them in the direction of, oh, we realize we can make a ton of profit on staying, making somebody stay the course, and not, not, not to use the word pivot again, but like not to turn yeah. away from us. It's hard to say exactly because right around when I started getting like. I actually, this, I don't I don't think I ever talk about this. I took a couple years off of gaming. Like right. when I was like doing like band and music and stuff, I just, I, I barely played games. I played games nowhere near as much as it's I because played of our last now. job. It's because of the job and the, the job you used to work at. Yeah. That definitely got me back into it that got at that time in a yeah. really, 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 uh, really hardcore Same way. For me. Between, between uh, what, what years, um, like 2009 to like 11 didn't really game a lot. And I feel like around that time games were coming out with more and more like downloadable content. So the expectation of playing your game more and more, I was just was about there. I was just about ready to say that the first, absolutely the first, I know it for a fact, DLC I bought, which I mentioned on the show before, mm -hmm. was from from 2009's The Saboteur. <laughs> of course, dude. Hey, the Saboteur remember, strikes again. Remember what it was? No, I, I don't know. Tell, tell me. <laughs> so the setting of Saboteur is 1930s, 40, or right before World War II breaks out, mm -hmm. right? Um, Paris, France, and what you could pay for as a DLC. Mm -hmm. For I think like a buck ninety nine, to be honest with you, it was a dollar ninety nine. Was it really? There, your main that's hub. Pretty amazing. You know how you go back to a hub in a game, and that's where you can like sure. check in for your new missions. Mm -hmm. Your main hub was a go go dancing place, like a French go go dancers, where okay. you could get laid, and you could also like. And what you unlock is a secret door that goes into the basement of that that bar or what that go-go house or whatever yeah. where there's private full nude stripping in the saboteur in the saboteur and i paid did you, buy, did you buy that for a dollar 99 is that what you 99 got, right? to get some fucking stripping action man 
Oh, that sounds that exactly it. like something you'd pay for. A dollar ninety nine to take the clothes off, man. I was mm-hmm. down for it. Um, and that's the first DLC I've ever paid. I ever paid for in a game. I have no recollection of paying for DLC in anything prior, even though it yeah, existed. The, the I'm trying to find some information about this right now because I just realized that. Uh, I mean, the c- trend pro- probably started with MMO, right? Yeah, exactly. I was about yeah. to say probably with with World of Warcraft or with Final Fantasy yeah. 11, and. The only that's, thing that I can't find That's where the hand. microtransaction, like, those style of games are where microtransactions were birthed as well. Uh, I'm not well, entirely sure if it lines up exactly like that. Wasn't the like, first microtransaction, though, Oblivion, the horse? Oblivion had a, a store where you could buy a horse for, like, a couple dollars. Yeah, and people were like, mm-hmm. fuck you! But even that would have built off of the backs of the idea of an expansion being released. And that's definitely an early MMO thing, right? You get an expansion every couple months or every year or something, and that would be a big drop of content to keep playing your game. What I can't really find on a quick search, and I wish I did this before the show, maybe we'll we'll update you guys later, and next week or something we'll follow up with this. Um, I can't find if there was like, I'm sure there was, like some kind of a newsletter like communicating what to expect. But I want to know if there was or if there wasn't. I want to know if the trend to communicate out to fans only started to happen as a form of damage control. That's the that's the the theory that I have that I want to be able to prove yes or no. You know, because if a company was just in the habit of releasing expansions and timed releases uh, and people knew what to expect and when they were going to get that, I don't know if there would be this big show of being like hold on, here's what's coming, relax, we got you, check this out, which is what all these companies do these days. Destiny did it for years, The Division did it for years. Fallout 76 did it for years where they drop something, they go, oh shit, all right, well, that didn't really hit. Uh, here's what you can look forward to. And then they give you like, they give you like the con, they give you like content previews in tiny little, little text blocks and timelines and little lines with years and months, or maybe in Cyberpunk's case, nothing, just yellow and black text and, and uh, a guess as to when it's going to happen in the year. But this uh, is like a thing that's become a show. Do you oh, yeah. mean it's become it's very like performative when this happens? Oh yeah, they're they're fucking using some heavy amount of uh they're using a heavy amount of uh illustrator to create yeah. these yeah, to, it's... to create these elaborate um what actually what's the big software that companies like that use to create like t- there's something people use oh, in cor- oh, corporate like graphic design? Yeah, what was it called? In de- InDesign. No, I was, I, was, I was, I thought, oh, okay. So InDesign's the common one. I thought it was called mm-hmm. Om, Omnibus. There's what probably it? multiple ones and I'm not in yeah. that industry, so I don't know all the options. I know there was, I know, was, I, know it, I came across something called Omnibus that I think it was called Omnibus where the design, it's a software basically that helps you to create like, you know, fucking, um, Venn diagrams in a, in a, mm. a quick and efficient way for major right. corporations and, like people obsessed with like create it's you know the powerpoint engendered all of this and what you right. know the, the application powerpoint yeah. and then what people created all these powerpoints ultimately resulted in is well how can we make this shit more interesting well i think that's part of why they make it look like that because what it would have done is given people that glimpse behind the curtain and it would have like made gamers forget about the fact that they don't actually have playable content but they go oh look we're like it's like we're at the meeting like oh we're getting this slide it's like we're at the meeting exactly because it looks like it's probably looks like the exact software they use for the meetings yes <laughs> we've had images from meetings it's the wizard leak. it's the wizard turning the curtain and that's so that's what they did dude do you remember like when when destiny uh came out obviously and everyone was speculating about what to come out next and there was a big dlc that ended up being the taken king but comet was the code word everyone was talking about oh my god you see the leak for comet comet's gonna come in like next september and like there was like a big vex head for one of the expansions that ended up never happening like there was like a timeline with very pretty pictures and just all the stuff that we now get people were wanting that people were wanting that and they were starving for that because of how broken the original Destiny launch was, right? Destiny not bro- no, not broken. Just, just uh, not everything we would desire. No one, no one knew what was next. Like the game came out and it was fun, and 
and in Destiny's case, they're one of the first people or first studios to put out a game where you were in an evolving world that wasn't quite as deep as an MMO, but felt kind of like Halo, where you could just keep playing it when the mission was done, and it was very ambiguous. And it felt cool. It felt like there was something there. But after everyone, you know, went through the main story and killed a black heart of uh, of well, you, you kill know, that the, the you garden. do that main story like fucking in like eight hours or less than that. Yeah, it's 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 pretty breezy. Actually, mm, it was kind of beefy. You went around to a lot of different planets. What did you in in the in the core story? Yeah, but like if you just went through and played the story, that was kind of it. Like you could go in and maybe like your friend told you about this cool gun that he got the drops. Maybe you play to get like the right drop. Maybe your friends do the raid, and you figure, oh, there's like a way to like keep playing this game. But then you start thinking, no, we get, we got to the point else? where we started trying to cheese shit and find like little secrets. Like yeah, we, right, like, right. You know, we got to the point where we were like, what can we no clip into to get sure. beyond? Well, well, we did that because we loved playing the game. But then you have your average player that just like, I'm I'm kind of interested in this. Where do I go from here? What else is there? And that's, I think, part of the reason why people wanted to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. What can we expect from from our money? What does this buy us? You know, what am I buying into? I think there's actually, there's a lot here. We don't have the time in this episode to really unpack this, but like, I think expansions and, and evolving consistent or open world games and roadmaps and communication and stuff. I think it really kind of bred an entire genre. Like look at a, look at star citizen right now. Star citizen is a game that came out when all of this stuff was really hitting its stride in terms of like persistent world always online games yeah and they were like they're like hold on what year star citizen i yeah. do they started funding was it eight years ago yeah 2012 yeah and that's, that's when that like, sounds right i just couldn't yeah. remember uh i'm gonna look it up actually while we're talking and destiny would have come out two years after that but like in uh in star citizen's case they said hold our beer you give us a bunch of money we're gonna give you the biggest bestest most open, always online world. And you're going to be blown away by this thing. Yeah, like at this point, with the amount of like throwaway disposable income they acquire from service games, right, that they make over time. Like with take Bethesda. Let's talk about mm -hmm. my wheelhouse just for a second. Sure. So Fallout 76 might be this highly criti criticized game, but like over time they did exactly what we were talking about. They came out with nothing with, I believe, definitively a plan for something. Although everyone mm -hmm. goes on and on that they're the stuff we got now that fleshed out the game was a reaction to the fans anger with them. And I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a minute. Like that, that, I believe the fucking game, that was all their plan. They never changed anything. They did exactly what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. People just added their own fucking narrative on there that didn't exist. Right. Um, so, but like they go and they, they come out with this game and everything. Um, but then now they're making money on people playing it consistently. Like I buy microtransactions from them. I've, I've bought occasionally. I don't do it all the time, but like, you know, if there's a cosmetic I want, I'll just fucking pay like 17 bucks or something for like some, right. some, some of the in-game currency to like buy some cosmetics. It's fun for me because I play this on a regular basis with a group of people. And then they're also making money on the seasonal the, or the, the, the static people like myself who, who always play the game and pay for the service. So now you have the future, which is them claiming that they're going to come out with a game exactly like Skyrim, which is what was a big giant, not perfect thing. It still needs mods for people to feel like it's amazing, but like it was pretty great when it came out for its time. It was, it was incredible for the most part. It was a whole piece when we got it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's a little things here or there. Oh, the Dawn guard. Now we get crossbows or arrows and horses yeah. and mm -hmm. we didn't have that okay you change you you might have had that in development and you didn't put it out with the main game and you saved it for later okay fine 
but at least the main game still felt like it, and we didn't feel like that was missing. We didn't go, right. this feels like a game that should have fucking horses in it. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, right. they provided us plenty of fast travel points, and we didn't need the horses. You know right. what I mean? Um, but what is to make, what is, if they've already had success with two service games that make this regular steady money, that prove how much money they can, more money they can make from perpetual play, mm-hmm. what is the incentive to come out with an Elder, Elder Scrolls Six that has none of that? Is it strictly for PR? We release this because if we don't, the fans are going to skewer us. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah, is if that you're, it? If you're, is that no, is that strong? No, I, I I don't think that that's it. I don't um, think that potion right there has enough uh, oomph. I, I think that sw- question, that question could be its its entire own episode. Like the the influences though as to what a studio decides to put their development resources toward. I think the Elder Scrolls is so embedded well, in Bethesda's DNA that that they themselves they need to make Elder Scrolls 6 for themselves as creatives. And that's they, what the- they they want to be able to make a world that is self-contained, the depth and the immersion that ESO doesn't just because of the nature of the game and the nature of the style of the genre. The so the MMO way genre. the way they see you think the way they see their development approaches if we make enough money on this thing, this is the thing that makes the money to pay for the other thing that we want to do that's art. Well, I mean, it might be how they look at it now, but that's they were they always their name was built on on the art and they can't give that up right. for themselves. They want to do that. And, and that's they're that's, even more hold on, they're even more driven to do this with the failure of Cyberpunk. Because everyone was everyone was just was blatantly assuming that this was going to be the new gold standard of open world first person RPGs and this and this immersion, this this second life experience. But they shit the bed incredibly. So now it's wide open again for Starfield, which is going to come out before ESO or before Elder Scrolls Six. Right. It's it's open wide up again for Elder Scrolls Six if Starfield bombs. Like Bethesda has, has can still keep the crown of open world exploration RPGs. Yeah, and that's it's why they drive well, to develop it. What we're talking about is definitely germane to the video that that guy released, because even though if, if some of if we believe that some of that, um, an, you know, apology was not sincere, you know, meaning the parts where he's blaming the QA people and all that shit, right? It, the overall point to it is him to, emphasizing to us that they don't want to be perceived like the EA as the microtransaction, right? You know, microtransaction, not complete game DLC. They, ne- they, they, they never game. wanted to be perceived as that. Like, no. remember all the little messages you would get tucked into like your, your box of the Witcher. When I bought the the Witcher out of the box, wrote out a little slip of paper saying like, Hey, we're CD project red and we're committed to never making you pay for like, you know, your DLC, you know, in the first year, like, you know, you're going to get all of this stuff. This all comes with your game. We're here for you. Like they were very much like they were trying to be on the side of the gamers and they were like constantly saying, look at how we are. Look at all the ways that we are. Don't forget it. Why do I remember paying for blood and wine and the other thing? Why do I remember paying for that? Did Maybe late, you bought a collection. A later. Were, those were paid. What, later, did it become something that cost money they those always cost money well isn't that dlc that got released later that was free well they didn't they didn't say all of our future dlc would be free they said there will be free dlc but then they said we also had some big like bigger chunks planned that you could purchase well that that's consistent with the model of like mmo like eso Mm because eso will have like smaller things that are released in there included in whatever sure and then they have the larger ones that are like, uh, I figured out that it's actually based on um, regions. It's actually based on regions of their map. The bigger ones, if it's just a story that's within like a region, mm-hmm. it's included. When I say this, I'm saying included in the membership. It's not included for sure. people who didn't pay for the membership. Right. But if you pay for the membership, the smaller story things just are a part of it. 
and then what costs you extra is when they open another region of the map with a whole campaign world got it and the other point i was going to make is this model this business model like the structure of it not like the fact that like the original games come out not performing well like do you mean but the, I, do you mean the, the business model of ship the game fix it later no not ship the game fix it later i mean ship the game and then add stuff later the expansion model okay yeah okay that predates fucking world of warcraft that predates that when i bring up hero's quest does anything pop in your mm. brain no hero's quest was a board game a dungeon crawling board game that i played as a kid oh did it have expansions it was my first experience with fucking it was the red box and the purple box oh you bought the okay the, I, I can't remember one was called something keep and you it was an extra expansion that had like an, an extra like little game board that you can lay next to the other one and it expanded right. the map and like you know well, that's pretty cool go off to this keep so that was my first as a kid that was my first experience with expansions yeah and D and D, I had plenty of expansions sure yeah, yeah. D, &D yeah, I mean... you buy you buy the main campaign box for ravenloft and the next next thing you know they're like oh get the mask of the red death expansion box get the yeah. uh you know that go to this other section uh forbidden lore was the ravenloft dlc box I'm calling it DLC. It wasn't downloaded content then. We were just... <laughs> no, but we're just so used to that that turn of phrase right but now. Get, it's like, get the Forbidden Lore. Uh, get this. It was the Forbidden Lore. Um, so they have uh, in Ravenloft, which was the Gothicara themed, they had um, a character class type of NPC, not the player character. I'll go mm -hmm. through, I think later they introduced it as a player character. But uh, they had an NPC you could meet called the Vistani, which was based on, it's actually a pretty racist, like, you know, like what do you call that when you just, that's what a group is like it's basically like a stereotype gyp, eastern yeah a stereotype yeah. of eastern european gypsies they were called vistani but like they were the mystic fortune tellers so yeah. you get you, you buy this forbidden lore dlc pack you get with it like a nice like silk looking bag with like weird cryptic forbidden yeah. lore symbols on all, it all this like physical stuff and you get a, a set of tarot cards with it and you mm -hmm. get like dice that have unique runes and shit on them. And like that ended up being like this really cool expansion to the Ravenloft main campaign right. quest. Uh, and it had multiple more stories, three or four more stories that you could play through with your friends. And that was my earliest introduction to this kind of shit, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, this, like conceptually, this goes probably way back than either of us think. But what is, what is different then and now? is my game box came with all the pieces <laughs> right. of the main game. Right. I wasn't like missing four of the tarot cards. <laughs> all the things clicked together on the board the way they're supposed yeah, to. Yeah, and, the board and, didn't uh, come out uneven and half of it like fall off the fucking table I was trying to uh, No one's to. telling you. Yeah, we ship those bases a little bit uneven. I know they don't stand up the way they should. <laughs> we, we're really sorry about that. And we think maybe next Just time. Send them back to... Omaha, Nebraska, so that we can fix them. We, we got to get we'll, the base. We'll, we'll send shave, them to you. We'll shave uh, your feet down, and then we'll send them back out to you. We're really sorry. We'll, we'll get that updated right away. The feet update, 1.5. It's coming out. <laughs> the feet update, 1.5. That's, it, it's, it's, that's a great point you made, man. It's, just, it's, it's the equivalent of that, but in a, in a digital space. Ah, yeah. Well, we we, we uh, worked we we crunched really hard to to to, to file these feet for you. <laughs> <laughs> we crunched so hard that we we rushed the feet out. We were working Dude, so fast to get it out to you. Like and back then you didn't have the internet and a quick video you could watch. So we'd be like, where would the guy release like his statement? <laughs> he, he he would he would send out. Um, VHS tapes in the mail it'd be, yeah. that you could it'd be, watch. It'd be, a, it'd be a newsletter in like whatever niche magazine everyone read monthly. Right, right, probably. right, right. It would right. be that, or it would be like like forums or message boards because those were like definitely a '90s thing. In the early got stage in. of the internet. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's where they would. That's where they would disseminate their message of of feet gate of failure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all of your six sided dies have 
like two sixes and lacking the yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. We miscalculated on our calibration machines and they're all misweighted. They're all only going to roll ones. So I'm sorry. <laughs> your, your dice, you can use, use them in Vegas, but you can't use them with our game board anymore. <laughs> no, no. If you use them in Vegas, you're going to get thrown out. <laughs> Anyway, oh we're really sorry about that. We'll, we'll fix your dice. Don't worry. You're going to get a dice update. <laughs> dice update. Oh, the joke oh, doesn't dude. get old, man. It doesn't. It doesn't get old. Well, ah. we've got yet another timeline here with the cyberpunk stuff. So uh, we'll see how it goes, man. We'll see how... Look, look. Wow. you know what I will say? <laughs> They're not going to have any trouble sticking to this with no dates to commit to. They're going to say, look, we, we had our goals. We didn't put any targets on here. We, we, so, we told you nothing. 2021. Gave you everything. Oh, it happened in 2021. Hey, uh, here's a curious question. So if they release a... I don't think they'll ever be able... They would have to completely overhaul the the AI systems and like all that shit in order, in order to make the, what you really want out of the game work better. But if they released a... You know, like an immersion mod that requires you to... Not a mod, but like a DLC thing, like a survival mode where you have to eat mm -hmm. and drink with V and like do all that kind of shit. Would that, would that make you make the game more interesting for you or no? I don't think so. Just like the reason that the reason that it works in Skyrim is because like you're in a, you're in a medieval ish environment and you're someone who's really like carving their existence into the wild between towns, between dungeons, stuff like that in cyberpunk. Like you're in a city, you're in a city like, now plus 50 years you know like you could just go around the corner and go to a fast food restaurant to get food you can do that now you could probably do it there if you're really hungry i don't what, need the immersion i don't need so what, what would an immer telling me what would what would what would an immersion mod look like then in that world i mean it would be uh a uh, more of an in-depth interaction with people around you yeah so being able to have multiple conversations to multiple levels to, to just whoever's walking around right, the you. One -liners, and... The one-liners drive me fucking crazy. How you just it's, talk it's... to somebody and they go, hey, how you doing? They might as well not be there. It's It actually makes me more right. frustrated. And then people just not saying anything. And the, um, uh, the uh, children. Oh, my God, the children. The children are horrifying. The children, why they're not even, there's no reason for them to be there. There's no, no. reason for the children. <laughs> um, and you know what I found out? Remember, I complained a couple of um, a, a couple shows back. I complained that I was pissed that when I go into photo mode, I made the character nude in the inventory menu, but in yeah. photo mode, I go into that. She's wearing panties, mm -hmm. right? I I found out the reason for that. I dug into forums. It's they had to do it because of photo mode. They can't be full nude if they left the kids in the game. They were going to get slapped with like fees or fines or whatever. Because people would use the photo mode to be lewd with children. Oh. So they slapped the panties on to cover their asses. It was a quick fix. But they originally were going to release the game. Is that, is that, that sounds like, like read an it. internet theory. Oh, it's a theory. No, it's a theory. It was not confirmed by developer. Or maybe okay. it was. It might have been. It's, th this sounded like, oh, they, they here's the reason. You know, no, just, like, they, they've like said, no, thing. I don't know if they said that themselves. But somebody figured out that that I can't remember where somebody inferenced that, but somebody definitely inferenced that from something CD Projekt Red had released. But I, mm -hmm. I don't have the facts on what it was. But this guy in the forum, it sounded legit because it was like it was like they were developing and it was like a last minute thing where they re they realized, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, what are we about to release into like, this world? They were going to – here's why. Because somebody said when in the early releases of the game on PC, your character was all nude. And then after that first patch, whatever, 0.3 or 0.4 or whatever, mm -hmm. instantly the, the panty thing was on. And they and somebody had a theory that that's what, how they fixed a potential, like, issue with some kind of government – organization or like someone reached out to them and said hey did you guys know you could do this with photo mode on the street and they were uh, like oh yeah. fuck <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's it, it their choice was remove every child that they put into the game how hard would that, that have should been? have been the solution because who care what do who they do cares about the kids yeah the guy on the forum made the same point he goes why the fuck didn't they get rid of all the kids well because that would have added more production time 
it, it all comes back to them crunching up to a fucking, pro- literally crunching up to a production wall and yeah. going, we got to release this game now. We've told them too many times. Okay. And then last minute, the guy, the one guy goes, the children, and the nude. <laughs> yeah. The children and the nude. <laughs> and then we're like, ah, fuck. Can somebody deal with I that? Know, <laughs> I feel like this game also, it's, 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 this is more tangenting and I don't want to go too much more yeah, deeply into right. this. I just, I think it's, they, they're they tripping over themselves to be edgy to their detriment. That also, it, it gets on my nerves after a certain point. I know. I know. Like I said, I'm not someone who shies away from like from that content. Like, do it; it's fine. But like, if you're making a game which uh, should at least have some kind of like a reason to play, a story, an immersive world, a story you're telling, you know, and like this, it falls back to the 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 wannabe movie maker and storyteller in me. How does that serve the story? What's the purpose? Any of it, both the kids, the nudity, either one, either neither one, one makes sense. Like. It, neither of them serves the story at all. Unless they expected people to do full RP with their game, but they didn't give enough of that. There's not they, enough to do that. No, yeah. yeah. Weird. Well, it does feel good to infiltrate and shoot up a bunch of people. So at least it's got that going for it. Yeah. That, I mean, that's it. Like I said, there's no. a game there. There's a game there. In a completely incomplete world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And now we have a roadmap for that incomplete world getting more complete. Now we have an incomplete roadmap incomplete for that, roadmap in, for for that incomplete, incomplete world. <laughs> Jeez, it's, it's actually perfect at the end of the day. It's, 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 it couldn't be a more perfect roadmap for this game. Now, we've landed on it. I was pissed at first. Now I accept it. There could be no other roadmap than this roadmap. We've come full circle. If, now if, I'm fully on board with this. If they came out with a complete roadmap, I wouldn't even know what the fuck they just did when they T-boned me. No, <laughs> I'd not be them. like, you T-boned the shit out of me with that one. It's complete. <laughs> How did that <Yeah>. happen? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I think on that note, I think we're going to I think we did it. Get on out of here. I think that was the show. Good work. That was the show. Uh, I am Troop Zero. Thanks for listening for the Emerging Gamer Podcast. You guys can uh, find us on, uh, where can they find us, Felix? Where can they listen to us? Uh, you can listen to us on Spotify on Android. That's what I recommend, although there's multiple uh, Android. Because of Google, there's multiple a- uh, Android-based uh, podcasting apps you can find us. But I didn't put us there. We just ended up there because of Google. Um, but you can uh, mainly on Apple Podcasts as well, but I recommend Spotify on Android. And then, of course, on our YouTube channel, uh, which is constantly updated, and we're trying to hit 100 subscribers. So please subscribe to YouTube, yep. Emer- Emergent Gamer Podcast. Go find us there. Subscribe um, to that. And like the, I said, I'm Trip Zero. Um, you can find me on Trip Zero TV on Twitch, and all my socials are also Trip Zero TV. Very easy to find on the internet. And I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. And I'm doing the Stardew Valley. We're uh, trying to get the full community center fixed and donated to in year one. So that's my spicy challenge playthrough on the new 1.5 update. Come hang out and say hi. Felix. And I'm Felix Hergood. Felix Hergood at... Uh... Felix Hergood on Twitter, Felix Hergood on Twitch. Now, and I wanted you, just real briefly, Trip Zero, I wanted your opinion on this. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, because because of my work schedule, I can't really get back to what I ideally wanted, which was um, a morning coffee or morning stream. Right? Sure. I love doing that. And I can't stream at night because I fall the fucking street, uh, asleep. And I know <laughs> I'm not proving that right now, but you need to understand that I am fucking exhausted as I'm sitting here. I'm ready. Oh, to, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I get ready you, to dude. fall asleep. So if I was gaming right now and I was playing like an open world game, like fucking Cyberpunk or Skyrim or something like mm-hmm. that, I would literally fall the motherfuckers to sleep <laughs> You'd be as I'm playing yeah. the game. So that's out of the picture. You're never going to see me at night. It's not going to happen. But here's what I was planning. I'm going to use. I have 240 hours of vacation. I capped my vacation time at work. 240 okay. hours. So you got to so, start taking that. Right. So I have a two, I I can take two weeks at a time. That's about four weeks worth of vacation, but I can take two weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of taking off two weeks and doing a two week charity stream. Okay. Interesting. My my question for you, what what I need a recommendation on is what do you, I want to do nothing political per se, Mm -hmm. but I do want to do something related to COVID. Well, let's have this conversation off the show, and then yeah. we'll come back with like yeah. a like a real solid plan 
Yeah, because the plan is just forming right now. It's not. It's yeah. not set. I don't even have a date. I haven't even yeah. requested the time at work, but I'm going to. If you're but, listening to this uh, to this podcast at the very end of it, this this plan is like the roadmap that we got from Cyberpunk. It's very very vague. <laughs> that's very complete. There's, there's no dates. There's lines, but there's an intent, and that's the most important part. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Maybe before Cyberpunk comes out with their complete roadmap. Oh, absolutely! Before <laughs> we, we can count on that. All right. Well. Uh, All right, guys. Have a good, good week. Good show. Good chat, Felix. And we'll see you guys next week. Yep. Later. <laughs>